Psalm 37. Let's begin reading verse number 1. The Bible says, Fret not thyself because of evildoers, neither be thou envious against the workers of iniquity, for they shall soon be cut down like grass and wither as the green herb. Trust in the Lord and do good. So shalt thou dwell in the land, and verily thou shalt be fed. Delight thyself also in the Lord, and he shall give thee the desires of thine heart. Commit thy way unto the Lord. Trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. And he shall bring forth thy righteousness as the light, and thy judgment as the noonday. Rest in the Lord, and wait patiently for him. Fret not thyself because of him who prospereth in his way, because of the man who bringeth wicked devices to pass. Cease from anger, and forsake wrath. Fret not thyself in any wise to do evil, for evildoers shall be cut off, but those that wait upon the Lord, they shall inherit the earth. Let's pray. Father, we bless you. We thank you, Lord, for your wonderful promises. We thank you, Lord, for allowing us to be in the house of God on this Sunday morning. Now, Lord, there just seems to be a weight in here this morning. Lord, I didn't sense it earlier, but Lord, there's a weight. Lord, I pray that you'd put a hedge about us right now. I pray you'd bind the powers of hell. I pray that, Lord, you'd uh, uh, just take up your bowed in such a way that the weights would be lifted. Yes. We plead the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ over this place. And we pray as your truth is expounded on, it would be received with gladness. Lord, we just threw out a little scripture a few minutes ago, and yet, Lord, uh, uh, some seem to resist it. Maybe they weren't ready to receive it. Whatever it is, Father, I pray that you'd bind it and you'd cast it from us. Now, I pray for Miss Crystal, you would touch her in the hospital. I pray for Miss Rhonda, you'd help her to heal quickly. I do pray for Miss Shannon, you'd help her to heal as well. I pray for our folks who are traveling, you'd give them traveling mercies. And I certainly do pray, Father, for those that are providentially hindered, that desired to be here and couldn't be here this morning, you would be for, with them. Now, for those that have come this morning, Lord, we're so thankful that, Lord, they had a desire to come to the house of God. Lord, I pray they would not go away displeased. They'd go away rejoicing in that God chose to meet with his people. I do pray for Holy Ghost conviction. I pray if there be any in our midst who are unsaved, lost without Christ, that today would be the day of their salvation. I pray for your children this morning that, Lord, you'd help them to see the great importance of revival. Lord, the greatest need in our country today is not the election, although we need a change. Uh, and Lord, uh, uh, the greatest need is not the government, even though we need some changes. Uh, the greatest need is not our jobs or what's going on in our personal lives. Uh, the greatest need this morning uh, is for us to truly be revived by the Spirit of God. Uh, if enough churches get revived, it'll change our country, it'll change our government, it'll change uh, all those things that we have allowed to take precedence over you. God, help us to get back to seeking you first. Uh, now, Father, speak to hearts. Uh, have your will and way. Uh, use this unworthy vessel and glorify your name. We'll bless you for it. For it's in the wonderful and holy name of the Lord Jesus we ask it all. Amen. Amen. I want to draw your attention, first of all, to the directives uh, that the psalmist lays out here. He lays out some very specific things uh, that will help us this morning. Some things that we deal with on a daily basis. Number one, in verse one, he said, fret not thyself. And yet some of you fret. Some of you worry about things out of your control. Some of you are anxious. Uh, some of you just, uh, I, I can't get a grip on things. Uh, he said, fret not thyself. Why are you fretting over things? Uh, hey, if you know the Lord, uh, you have the peace of God in your soul. Uh, uh, there's nothing to fret about. He is in control. Uh, 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 he also said in verse number three, trust in the Lord. Uh, if you're fretting, you're not trusting. 
said, trust in the Lord. The Lord has all the answers. Uh, hey, he's given you a measure of faith. Exercise it. Trust in the Lord. Uh, put your trust in God. Uh, friend, you'll never be dis disappointed. He said, delight thyself also in the Lord. Uh, uh, listen, uh, 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 he's given us a directive. We ought to delight in the Lord. Uh, I wonder how, how great churches would be in America today uh, if we delight in the Lord as much as we delight in worldly things, uh, as much as we delight in sports things, uh, as as much as we delight uh, in things that a uh, hundred years from now won't matter, uh, God help us to learn to delight in the Lord. Uh, uh, listen, I wrote this down several years ago. Uh, delights drive our decisions. You know why some of you are already planning not being here during revival? Because you, your delights are in other things other than the Lord. That's driving your decisions to be other places. Right? Huh? Can I say this? Uh, our decisions drive our directions. When we decide what we're going to do, that's where our feet go. Amen. We don't ask the Lord, Lord, uh, you tell me where to go, because we already know. Our delights drive our decisions, our decisions drive our directions, and our directions lead to our destiny or where we're going to end up. Look at verse 11. But the meek shall inherit the earth and shall delight themselves in the abundance of peace. Amen. Amen. See, when we delight in the Lord, we have peace. The reason so many people are troubled, they're not delighting in the Lord. Well, that went over like a lead balloon. He also, in the directives, tells us in verse number 5, Commit thy way unto the Lord. He didn't say, Ask for the Lord to commit his way to you. Right. We're to commit to his ways. Yeah. His ways are the good ways. His ways are the best ways. His ways lead to life, peace, joy, happiness, goodness, gentleness. And I'm looking around and some of you don't look too happy, happy, happy today. Amen. Some of you got the way of the world on your minds. Some of you hadn't prayed for the service. Some of you didn't come looking for God. I'm glad you're here. I hope you run right into him. Amen. Amen. We find in verse number 7, he said, Rest in the Lord. You've heard me quote it a million times. Hebrews 4, 9, There remaineth therefore a rest of the people of God. You have a privilege the world don't have. A place where you can rest in the arms of Jesus. Some of you don't look like you've rested too much. Hmm. Uh, them bloodshot eyes are telling on you. You're worried about too many things. And he tells us in verse number 8, I don't know who this is for, but it's for somebody, cease from anger and forsake wrath. Fret not thyself in any wise to do evil. Some of you might be angry this morning. Life hasn't dealt you a, a, the hand you thought it should. Somebody in your family has gotten your crawl. Hmm. You didn't like the weather forecast. Something's made you angry. Yet the Bible tells us to cease from that. We see the directives. Notice, if you will, the disposition. Look down at verse 23. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord, and he delighteth in his way. We see the disposition, or that term, ordered. It said the steps of a good man. It's talking about somebody seeking righteousness and seeking a righteous life. Seeking to live right, do right. That man's steps are ordered by the Lord. And that man is delighting in the ways of the Lord because the Lord's taken all the hardships out of it. We're just following Him. Listen, when you're following Him, nothing else matters. Hmm? Uh, I got to thinking about a righteous man's steps that are ordered. That means they're arranged. The Lord arranges things for their lives. You ever look around and say, well, how come that person's so blessed? I want to be blessed. Well, are you praying like they're praying? Are you seeking the Lord like you seek, they seek the Lord? Are you walking like they're walking? Now, there are a lot of people who have things, but they don't have the Lord, Brother Ray. There's a difference. I'd rather be blessed than to have things. Yes. And I have learned that when you are following the Lord, He not only blesses you, sometimes He'll bless you with things. Amen. Get your eyes off the things. Get your eyes off the Lord. He may give you better things than those folks got. Hmm? Amen. Those things that money cannot buy. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it means they're arranged. It also means they're assigned. They're planned. I'm glad God's got a plan for us. Some of us are just not walking according to his plan. 
those ordered steps also, they're, they're accommodated, they're equipped. Uh, uh, the Lord will equip you uh, to do the plan He has set before you. But if you're not walking after you, you won't get the equipment you need to accomplish what you Amen. need to accomplish because you wouldn't use it for good. We see the disposition, see the directives. Now notice the dependence. Look at verse 24. Though he fall, he said a good man, didn't say a perfect man, can I say, you can strive to do the best that you possibly can. You're still going to fall short of the glory of God. But that shouldn't keep you from striving. And even when you do mess up, look what happens. Though he fall, he shall not be utterly cast down. For the Lord upholdeth him with his hand. Huh? Amen. Uh, you can only fall as far as the Lord's hand. That's if you're walking right and doing right. If you're not walking and doing right, you'll be utterly cast down. Do you ever see somebody, they're right here. Boy, I'm excited about church. I love God. I'm excited about being in. And in a, in a month's time, they're on the bottom of the barrel. They're miserable. They drag in and drag out. What happens? They weren't living righteously. And when trouble came, they were utterly cast down. But somebody's right here. I want to serve God. I want to live for God. And they're walking with God and, 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 and facing God and, and praying and seeking the Lord and seeking the things of God. They'll get hit with something. And oh, it may knock them off their, off their stool. But they won't fall as far as that other person. Because the Lord upholds them with his right hand. I like verse 25. I'm not going to preach on it, but I like it. My family sings about it. I've been young. Now I'm old. You have not seen the righteous forsaken nor to see begging bread. Didn't say he didn't see the saved. Say he didn't see the righteous. I promise you, if you do right, God's going to do right. Hmm. I'm interested in verse 24. Though he fall, he shall not be utterly cast down, for the Lord upholdeth him with his hand. I want to use that thought, Brother Phil. His hands. Amen. I want to think about the Lord's hands this morning. We came in, we offered up the right hand of fellowship. That's a privilege of being a believer. But can I say there's something about his hands? Nobody's ever had hands like his hands. Nobody can do what God's done, what he is doing, what he will do. I'm interested in his hands. Can I say this? His hands shaped us. Hmm? The Bible said in Genesis 2, 7, And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the bread of life, and man became a living soul. Uh, can I say it was God who shaped man with his very hands uh, and breathed into man the breath of life, and man became a living soul. Uh, and can I say, uh, every man that's ever came through the uh, womb of the belly, God formed him in the belly. Uh, his hands, the ones that made us and shaped us. Uh, uh, listen, uh, I know it's election cycle. It's real clear. Uh, you can't be a Bible believer and vote for a crowd. Their whole agenda is murdering babies. Uh, how can I say uh, every precious baby formed in a womb was formed by God. Uh, every baby is a vital life uh, uh, the moment it's conceived. Uh, how can I say uh, uh, it's never uh, found in the Word of God uh, where you can uh, murder a baby or murder God's creation and God be pleased with it. Uh, hey, uh, it's it's an easy vote. Uh, I just don't vote for that crowd where the whole platform's uh, murdering babies. Amen. Huh? Well, I want my daughters to have a choice. Mine too. Don't sleep around till you get married. Right. See, they want to sin and get away with their sin. Right. They say, well, we'll just give it a title and that does away with it. Uh, it doesn't change them from being a baby murderer and it never leaves their conscience, that mama. Uh, that's why they fight so hard against it. Uh, uh, they want to ease their conscience of the fact they murdered a baby. Uh, it's just like a drunk. Uh, they give it a pretty name called a sickness. Uh, call them an alcoholic. Uh, no, they're still a drunk. Uh, hey, but I've got good news. Uh, the blood of Jesus Christ cleanses us from all sin. And, uh, he can take a drunkard and make him stop drinking. Uh, hey, he can take a murderer and forgive him of his sin. Uh, make him a child of God. Only God can do that. Uh, and I say his hand shapes us. You know God's hands is what solidifies everything. 
The Bible said in Colossians 1.16, For by him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible, uh, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers. Uh, all things were created by him and for him, uh, and he is before all things, and by him all things consist. Uh, when I say he's in control, brother, he's in control. Uh, God has it handled. Uh, he made everything. Uh, nothing has ever slipped up on God. Uh, nothing has ever occurred unto God. Uh, everything is kept in order by God. Uh, because through and by him do all things consist. Uh, Isaiah said in Isaiah 40 and 12, uh, Who hath measured the waters in the hollow of his hand, uh, and meted out of heaven with that span, uh, and comprehended the dust of the earth in a measure, uh, and weighed the mountain in scales and the hills in a balance. Uh, I'm telling you, God's in control of this thing. Uh, Amen. Amen. I was a weird teenager. I wasn't as weird as you, Lucas, but I was weird. <laughs> Most guys were checking out sports books in the library. I checked out books on quantum physics. That was weird. Uh, it interests me. Newton's relative, you know, a matter and all theory of relativity, and I'm all about matter and all about atoms and electrons and neutrons and protons and all that kind of stuff and how it worked around and all that. And I thought I'd never ever really use all that. I just I was interested. I was interested in math and science. Can I say this? I learned something, brother Ron. There's no inanimate object. Now we look at this pulpit, sturdy, made out of oak. Matter of fact, it's so good we moved it from the old building to the new building. Why? You couldn't improve upon it. Amen. I mean, if we look at it solid, it holds up everything we want it to hold up. It's an inanimate object. It's not going anywhere unless we pick it up to move it for the Christmas program. But it's not an inanimate object. Everything's made of matter. And matter's made of atoms. And atoms have electrons and neutrons in them. Them things are buzzing all the time like bees. And them atoms are moving. Them electrons are moving. Them protons are moving. All that stuff's a moving. Uh, and something keeps it all together called gravity. This thing is moving. What keeps it here is gravity. And who do you think keeps gravity? Amen. 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 His hands. Yes. Hmm. Back, back, I don't know, 30, 40 years ago, they had a show called Quantum Physics. And they tried to bring it back out, and they brought it out in a woke version. And it just don't look the same. But anyway, what they was trying to do was shoot this guy through time and space. The problem was, with, and, and they've done that with quantum physics. They can shoot an object through here. The problem is they can't slow it down to keep it in the same form on the other side. And so they've tried to work all that stuff out. God's got it all in control. Let me help you something. I could take you, I don't have time, I should look it up. I could take you over Ezekiel, where Ezekiel said he was in the Spirit in the Lord's day, and the Lord moved him from one place to another. Say, what was that? That's quantum physics. Say, how did he do that? Could he fly and go through walls? On? No, he couldn't. But God can. Amen. You remember when the disciples were locked up in the, hundred, uh, the, in, in the upper room and worried about the news that, you know, what was going to happen and they'd heard that Jesus resurrected and all of a sudden Jesus appeared in the midst? How come the walls didn't stop him? Because through and by him do all things consist. Time and space don't matter to God. And by the way, if it don't matter to him, why should it matter to us? Some of you are so worried about things. His hands solidifies things if it's too big for you let him have it yes sir amen mm. yes. he's got it under control right. some of you keep yourself up at night fretting and worrying about stuff and you get up the next morning it isn't any closer to being solved than when you went to bed uh, it's out of your control but it's not out of his uh, let him have it friend he's the one who can solidify everything amen his hands shaped us. His hands solidify. Can I say this? His hands gave us the scriptures. Well, I thought I'd get an amen right there. Well, you didn't get the scriptures at Walmart. You got them from God. Right. 
Exodus 31, 18, And he gave unto Moses, when he had made an end of communion with him upon Mount Sinai, two tables of testimony, uh, tables of stone written with the finger of God. Do you realize the first scripture ever given to man was written by the very finger of God? Uh, uh, do you realize uh, uh, that every uh, uh, true Bible that you have uh, has handed down to us from God? Uh, God has always used whether it was his finger or an instrument of man uh, uh, to pin down his very word for you and I. Uh, 2 Peter 1.19 uh, We also have a more sure word of per uh, prophecy where undo uh, uh, ye do well that ye take heed as a light, uh, as a light that shineth in a dark place uh, until the day dawn and the day star rise in your hearts uh, knowing this first that no prophecy of scripture is of any private interpretation uh, for the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man uh, but holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost uh, we got the scriptures from God himself uh, they're God breathed they're infallible they're inerrant and what a blessing to have his word uh, we have a foundation we can stand on and what separates us from the cults and from uh, false denomination that book yeah. Amen. I got a little book said the Bible makes me a Baptist yeah. back when Baptists were what the Bible talked about yeah. today you got a bunch of people claiming to be Baptists they don't know what they are I was on the flight from Atlanta to Jacksonville, sat down next to a fella, he was a nice fella, but he told me he'd been baptized three times. He said he was a Baptist. He must be one of them Baptists like get dunked a lot, I don't know, huh? He just don't understand the doctrine of baptism. There's scriptural baptism and then there's everything else. But once you're scripturally baptized, you don't need to be baptized again. Huh? And you get scripturally baptized after you get born again. It's real simple. Uh, but can I say his hands gave us the scriptures. His hands solidifies everything. His hands shaped everything. Can I say this? That his hands were scarred for you and I. The Bible said in Luke chapter number 23... Verse 33, And when they were come to the place which is called Calvary, there they crucified him, the malefactors, and one on the right hand and the other on the left. That word crucified was a death sentence. He carried his cross down the Via Della Rosa up Calvary's mountain, and there he yielded himself to the cross, and they pierced his hands and his feet, nailed him to that cross and suspended him between heaven and earth. He was a cursed man, for the Bible said, Cursed is everyone that hangeth on the tree. What was he cursed for? He's cursed because he loved you, Colonel. He's cursed because he loved you, Brother Josh. He's cursed because he loved you, Brother Seth, Brother Caleb. Uh, he was cursed because he loved us, uh, and he loved us to death. He paid a death that he should have never died. Uh, he died for you and I, that you and I could be saved and live uh, because of him. Uh, the Bible said in John chapter 20 and verse 25, the other disciples therefore said unto him, we have seen the Lord. Uh, talking about Thomas now, but he said unto them, except I shall see the prince, uh, the hands, the prince of the, in his hands, the print of the nails, uh, and put my finger into the print of the nails, uh, and thrust uh, my hand into his side, I will not believe. Uh, verse 27, then saith he to Thomas, reach hither thy finger, uh, and behold my hands, uh, reach in uh, uh, thy hand and thrust it in my side and be not faithless but believing uh, can I say unto you that's what some of your problem is uh, you're wanting to see the hand of God uh, you're wanting to see him do this for you and then you'll believe in him uh, he don't work that way friend uh, uh, you ought to believe in him because he said so uh, and when you believe in him uh, you'll start seeing them nail pierced hands work in your life uh, and do for you things you could not do for yourselves uh, his hands were scarred for us. Can I say that? His hands save. He's in the saving business for the Son of Man has not come but for the seeking to save that which was lost. He came to save. 
We were lost. We were dead in our sins. We were headed to a place called hell, uh, the charred region of the dam, a place prepared for the devil and his angels. Uh, 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 the soul of man was never uh, 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 designed to go there. Uh, but yet when man disobeyed God, man became a sinner and sin came into this world and death by sin. Uh, and those that die in their sin outside of Christ, uh, they can't go to glory when they die. Uh, they're an eternal being. They have to go somewhere and they go to the lake of fire and pay for for their own sins uh, because they would not let the blood of Jesus Christ pay for their sins. Uh, But make no mistake, uh, it's God's will that none should perish uh, but that all should come to repentance. Uh, Jesus came to save. Uh, He came to save every man, woman, boy, and girl. uh, And he'll save you if you're lost. Uh, The Bible said in Matthew 14 and verse 30, uh, 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 talking about Peter, uh, but when he saw the wind boisterous, he was afraid and beginning to sink. He cried, Lord, save me. He's walking on the water. Uh, said, Lord, if it be thou, bid me to come. He's walking on the water. Uh, and then he got to look around, got his eyes off of Jesus, and he began to sink. Uh, and he said, Lord, save me. Uh, the Bible said, and immediately Jesus stretched forth his hand uh, and caught him and said unto him, O thou little faith, uh, wherefore didst thou doubt? Uh, listen, uh, all you got to do is realize you're sinking. Uh, realize you need to be saved. Uh, cry, Lord, save me. Uh, and immediately he'll stretch forth that nail scarred hand uh, and he'll save you from the sea of sin. Uh, Amen. Acts 16, 31, And they said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved in thy house. Uh, Romans 10, 13, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Uh, there's none other name given under heaven uh, whereby we must be saved. Uh, he'll save you because that's what he came to do. Amen. His hands save. Uh, can I say this? His hands secure. Uh, his hand will be our shield, as Miss Brittany sang. John 10, 27, My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. Let me just stop right there. Can I say... Lucas, after you got saved, the devil knew he could never get your soul. But he don't want you to be a light to anybody else. And so he'll attack you. And one of his greatest forms of attack is he'll get you to doubt whether or not you've been saved. Amen. Jesus said, my sheep hear my voice. They know me and they follow me. Huh? Let me ask you, why'd you come to church today? Was it because of a still small voice? Or because you just came because you was told you had to come? Hmm? Listen, before people got saved, Phil, before you got saved, and God cleaned up that filthy mouth of yours, you didn't doubt whether or not you was lost or saved. You didn't even have any thought about all that junk. No. You were just living life, living a dream down in the burg. Yeah. Huh? That's it. But when you got saved, things change, but then the devil, he'll mess with you. And you know when he messes with you? When you're not reading your Bible, when you're not praying, when you're not seeking the Lord, when you come to church and you're talking to your neighbor, not listening to the preaching or teaching. Uh, When their songs are being sung, your mind's somewhere else. That's when the devil messes with you. Well, you wouldn't think that way if you weren't, if you were saved. Amen. Uh, the Lord went on to say this because here's the reason I said all that you can't keep yourself saved no more than you keep your mind for 30 minutes sitting in church how come you can sit and watch a movie for two hours and just veg you come to church and your mind's everywhere but what you're listening to right that's good because the devil's fighting you and because your mind's not saved Mm. Amen. He said, My sheep hear my voice, I know them, and they follow me. And I will give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish. We ought to say hallelujah. Amen. Neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. My Father which gave them me is greater than all, and no man is able to pluck them out of my Father's hand, and I and my Father are one. He said, uh, my sheep are in my hand. No man can pluck them out of my hand. And he said, my, my hand and my father's hand are one. And no man can pluck them out of my father's hand. Now listen, I'm a man. I'm a poor excuse of one, but I'm a man. 
That means if I lost my mind and tried to jump out of his hand, I couldn't get out of his hand. Right. Right. Mm. Uh, I'm just glad I'm in his hand. Another place in Scripture says we're engraved in the palm of his hand. That's where that scar came in. huh? Amen. You know, when we get to heaven, we'll have a body just like Jesus, all except ours won't have scars. Those scars will be there to remind us what it took for us to get there. We're engraved in the palm of his hand. I'm glad his hand secures. I'm glad his hand keeps me saved. Amen. I got news for you. Everybody has good days. Everybody has bad days. Driving that Tesla was not a good day. Mm. You have some bad days. That has no reflection on my salvation. I'm saved whether I have a good day or a bad day. Now, if I have a poor attitude and I allow sin to get in my life, that's going to, that's going to break my fellowship with the Lord. I still have a relationship with Him. I'm still in the family of God. I might just be out of fellowship. Just like Brother Ron, when he didn't buy Miss Rhonda flowers for their anniversary, they're still, they're still married. Might not be fellowshipping real good. Hey, it's all right. It's better than what Brother Ray did that time for Miss Pam. I'll say this. She's in the nursery. Valentine's Day, he bought her a box of Tide. He said, well, it's something she can use, but it's not real romantic. I know it's got a little red on the box, but more orange than that, huh? Huh? Sometimes our fellowship might not be where it should be. That's why we need revival. Amen. But it has no reflection on our salvation. Oh, let me, let me, uh, I can't get off of this. I'm trying to get off. I've got to move on. I've got 18 more points. Lord have mercy. <laughs> it's not that bad, Clint. All right, all right. You've been all right. Listen. When people start doubting their salvation, it's real simple. Yeah. Can God lie? The Bible says it's impossible for God to lie. That's right. And did not God say if we'll believe that he'd save us? Mm. Did he not say that he gives unto us everlasting life? Amen. So if we've called on the Lord and he saved us, does that mean he'd lie and take it away? Mm. No. So if you're having a problem with your salvation, either God lied or you lied. Uh -oh. Either you didn't believe on the Lord because that'll happen every now and then. Somebody come forward to get saved, and somebody else says, well, I want to be saved too because they're saved. Well, that's not why you ought to get saved. You ought to get saved because you're lost and you need to believe on the Lord. And if you did it to please somebody else, you might be the liar. But God's not a liar. But if you, went, if you trusted in the Lord and believed it in your heart because you knew you need to be saved, then you're saved. But you might be out of fellowship with Him. Because God don't lie to you. Amen. Hmm? I hope that helps somebody. Amen. Can I say this? God's hands soothe. Oh, yeah. You live in this world long enough, you're going to get hurt. Mm -hmm. You're going to face very, very tragic things. Yeah. Only God can soften a troubled heart. Amen. Only Amen. God can soothe the soul that's hurting. Matthew 24 30 so Jesus had compassion on them and touched their eyes and immediately they received their sight and they followed him here's blinded people had faced much tragedy in their life it just took one touch from him and their life changed you know what you ought to be seeking for today if you're hurting you ought to seek the Lord Lord I just need a touch I need your touch his touch friends that solves all the problems can I say his hands have a strategy? And Job 5.18 says, For he maketh sore and bindeth up, he woundeth, and his hands make whole. God will allow things to come into your life because he has a plan. He's wanting to take you somewhere. And he's going to touch you and get you to where you need to be. And he's going to make it all right. Just trust him. Even when things aren't going well, God's working. Trust him. He has a strategy. God's hands supply. Philippians 4, 19, But my God shall supply all your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Everything you have came from the hand of God. Amen. God supplied it all. Can I say this? God's hands steady some things. You ever be on a rocky boat and just pray the waves kind of subside? God steadies the rocky boats of life. Amen. Mark 4, 39, he rose, rebuked the wind, and said unto the sea, Peace be still, and the wind ceased, and there was a great calm.
Can I say this? God's hand stays. In 2 Kings 4, 6, And it came to pass when the vessels were full that she said unto her son, Bring me yet a vessel. And he said unto her, There's not a vessel more. And the oil stayed. You know the, the miracle, the widow's oil, oil, cruise of oil. The oil stayed. And she'd dump it out. Next time she needed some, she'd go and it was there. And she'd dump it out. And next time she needed it, it was there because the Lord touched it and he stayed the oil. Can I say? He stays our essentials and makes them last. Amen. Hmm? Amen. Huh? Some of you drive vehicles that other people would have parked a long time ago, but they're still running strong because the Lord stayed your vehicle. Amen. Some of you, you haven't outgrown your clothes yet and you just can't wear them out. The Lord stays your clothes. Amen. Some of you outgrown, you put them on that back table and somebody else is wearing them out. What a blessing. But they just don't wear out. God stays. All of our essentials. He knows how to make things last longer, uh, to do more and be more accommodated. Why? Because God knows how to make things last. He stays our essentials. Uh, he stays our excitement for, for it's our strength. Uh, the joy of the Lord's our strength. The Lord knows how to stay that excitement in our soul. What a blessing. Uh, and he does know how to stay the hand of our enemies uh, and uh, keep the enemy at bay so we can get to, to him. What a blessing. Let me say this lastly. I'm talking about his hands. Well, the sad reality is some of you trust more in people's hands. That's why, Brother Jim, people are looking for a handout. Trust in somebody's hands, the generosity of somebody else to help them. Because they don't have enough spirituality if they're saved to wait on the Lord. You know, it's, it's Folks will say, I'm going to wait on the Lord, but I want to make sure the folks at church know what I need. Huh? It amazes me how many people call me to pray for them, and I'm thinking, why don't you talk to the Lord? He can get it a lot quicker to you than I can. Huh? But they draw comfort in that they're trusting my hand. Oh, if the preacher prays, why don't you just talk to the, the mediator between God and man, the man Christ Jesus? If you're saved, you've got access right to him. Why don't you talk to him? because they have more confidence in my hand than they have faith in his hand. God help us to trust the hand of God. Amen. We're going to have revival. It's going to come by God's hand. We're going to have a move of God in this country. It's going to come by his hand. Now I'm not talking about some of these things that are popping up on campuses around, uh, around the, the globe where uh, people go and they get all caught up in a rock band and they get caught up in some terminology and they jump around like a bunch of fish out of water and they go right back to class and nothing ever happened. I'm going to tell you, if God moves on you in such a way that causes you to jump like a fish out of water, you ain't getting over that in a day or so. Uh, well, the last thing I want to say, God's hands one day are going to salute. You remember I preached on not long ago when David came back from gathering all the spoils and those that stuck by the stuff, he saluted them. They were willing to go fight, but they just ran out of gas. One of, the day, one of these days, our heavenly David's going to salute us. Yes. The Bible says in John 14, 1, let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you, I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again, receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you may be also. We find out in the, in the epistles by Paul that Jesus is seated at the right hand of the Father. But in Acts chapter number 7, we find in verse 55, Stephen is being stoned. It says, But he, being full of the Holy Ghost, looked up steadfastly into heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing at the right hand of God. He's not seated. He's standing. Amen. John, Jesus said, I'm going to receive you unto myself. Stephen says, uh, he sees Jesus standing at the Father's right hand. In Matthew 25 and 21, it says, His Lord said unto him, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of the Lord. Amen. When it's time for us to cross over, it's not going to be Peter at a gate. Although I did see a very good meme this week. It showed cackling Kamala approach the pearly gates, and uh, there's Peter at the gate said, uh, no, you want the crowd on down the street. Oh, yeah. Yes, oh, my. Yeah. <laughs> That's good. Thought that was good. Yeah, that's good. 
Of course, the crowd down the street was crispy critters. But anyway, that's a whole other thing. It's not going to be Peter at the gate. The Lord receives us himself in the glory. And the Lord is going to salute us with a well done, thou good and faithful servant, if we've been faithful. I want one of those well done, thou good and faithful servants. Amen. I've said all that to say this. I appreciate that you came today. I appreciate, I hope you came seeking the Lord today. But there's too many disciples. Not enough apostles. Too many of us are looking for his hand and we're not looking for him. We ought to come seeking his face. He said, if my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves, pray, seek my face, and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven, I'll forgive their sin, and I will heal their land. We'll never, ever see revival come seeking his hand. We've got to seek his face. We've got to seek him. And when you seek him, you cannot only get him, you get his hands. Friends, he's done every work in your life through the work of his hands and he wants to work in your life today and all he's asking us to do is trust him to seek him to put him first and let him truly become the Lord of our lives then you won't have to tell anybody you've been a revival they'll see it in you God help us to appreciate the great hands of God let's all stand Brother Clint, come get a song of invitation. As they're picking out a song, let's pray. Father, we bless you. Thank you for the works of God. Lord, I could have went on and on and on till Jesus comes at all the great things thou hast done. But Lord, somebody in here needs your touch. They need the soothing hand of God. Someone may need corrected. They might need the spanking hand of God. Some in here today might need to increase their faith. Some in here today might need to repent. Some in here today might need to just get something settled. Lord, I pray for the next few minutes, folks would do business with God. They wouldn't look to the right or the left or who's doing what they themselves will take inventory of their heart and they'll do business with God. Oh, how we need you, Lord. God, without you, we can do nothing. Too many times we try to do things in the energy of the flesh and that's why it comes to naught. So, Father, do work for the next few minutes in this invitation. Certainly, God, if there's somebody unsaved, I pray today would be the day of their salvation. Father, breathe on this place and we'll not fail to bless you for it. Speak to hearts now in Jesus' name. Amen. Did you know that IBC is now on iTunes, TuneIn, SoundCloud, and Google Play? Head on over to your podcast provider and subscribe today. And as always, thanks for listening.